Car seats are designed to withstand an accident, but what about after the accident? With only a few seconds to respond, what would you do if the main buckle malfunctioned, melted while the car was encompassed in flames or taking in water? Would, someone would a bystander be familiar with your child's car seat? Should you be unable to respond? How would you remove your child with only seconds to spare? Hi, my name is Austin Cohn, and I'm with Release a Child Safety Systems, or REACH. And we at REACH have designed and patented a mechanism that provides for two additional release points located on the side of a child car seat. Our mechanism consists of two pins that, when pulled, disengage the shoulder straps from the top and allow the child to be removed quickly. Our target markets are car seat manufacturers and child advocacy groups. And our goal is to license our mechanism to car seat manufacturers to be easily implemented in current designs or in production. Some of our major achievements to date include a working prototype, an agreement to incubate at the University of Alabama, and a formed business plan. For the immediate future, our needs are for qualified personnel to implement our marketing strategy, and for the most importantly, the financial resources needed to support their operations. And this is why I'm speaking with you today. This is not just a great business opportunity. This is an opportunity to save children's lives. Would you be interested? <coughs> okay. Thank you. Thomas would like to go through and give a or show a demonstration on how or y'all have any questions to show y'all how this thing works. As you can see, we got two pins located here on each side, and they correspond with the shoulder straps on each side. If you pull the pin on this side here, if you pull this pin on this side here, pull that out, that releases this safety harness right here, that side of the shoulder strap. This allows you to remove the child. <laughs> that allows you to move. So we're providing additional access points in case there was an accident, in case this main buckle malfunctioned. Do you have any questions? Yeah, why do you need venture capitalist money? We need venture capitalist money, like I said, to implement our, our marketing strategy. We're looking for qualified personnel to go out and have a push and pull approach. We would push as far as implementing a sales force to go and contact car seat manufacturers, and we would create pool for our product through child advocacy groups, magazines, local news stations, other forms of media. How many car seat manufacturers are there? There are relatively few car seat manufacturers. That's why we feel that if we were to able to sign a contract with a car seat manufacturer, we'd be able to inject our product into the market rather quickly. There are about six main manufacturers and 19 total. So six factories making them. There are six companies that specialize. In factories. How many factories? How many factories? Yeah. Well, I know that there are nine, the 19 companies that are involved in the industry. There are six companies, and they have a large number of factories. The child car seats are part of the child safety accessories market, which is in 2010 is estimated to be about 8.9 billion dollar market, and includes strips and strollers, cribs and strollers. And so, how many, do you have a patent on this? We have a patent. That's our that's our marketing advantage is that we have a patent on the mechanism located in the back. Is this a retrofit or does it have to be built into the, all these manufacturers? This has to be built in. This would be implemented into the car seat manufacturers would implement this into the already existing design. This would not be a retrofit. What's your uh, pricing to the manufacturers? We, we hope that the mechanism would, will add value. We know that it will add value to car seats. And so we estimate our car seat would range anywhere from $100 to $150. And we would collect royalties through the licensing agreement on the sale of the car seat. How much are you willing to for car seat? Uh, four to six percent. Okay. And how many car seats do you estimate in a year? Well, like I said, the industry is about $8.9 in 2010. We estimate 10 to 20% of that are related to car seats. So. One licensing agreement, because there are a few, relatively few companies involved in the industry, one licensing agreement could inject our product um, relatively quickly. And we would, that first licensing agreement would imply some sense of exclusivity to that one company, but we would eventually hope to sign multiple licensing agreements. And then our exit strategy, 36 to 60 months, would be to sell the patent and sell the company. How much money do you need from us? We need $400,000. Why? To implement operations Why? for two years, we look into we're hope we want to we want to implement a three group strategy: a finance group, a marketing group, and a design group. We know that some of Reach's success will be dependent on making future designs, future patents, and not only apply this to car seats, but apply this to multiple different types of harness release systems. 
Will you have a marketing strategy of informing a uh, customer about how this is released because unless someone is informed, how will they know that that is available in the back of the seat? Yes, ma'am. This, uh, it's not on this particular prototype because we want to dem use this for demonstrations and mm -hmm. once you use this as a demonstration, it will not be able to, you will not be able to reuse this. But on the actual actual car seats, we will have a cover that covers this pin up and it has a how-to sticker on it, how this works. Okay, so are you going to advertise, uh, I mean, is there going to be a standard type format where that uh, with the advertising of safety of car seats that that is uh, pointed out that right. yes, well, I we would, would do advertisements of this particular design uh -huh. to show how it works. We think it's extremely important to create pull for our product uh -huh. child advocacy groups, magazines, um, local and state representatives that this is something that every parent wants to have on their child car seat so that way anyone even if everyone they're not familiar, everyone would right. be familiar, just like we're all familiar with operating a fire extinguisher mm -hmm. or the emergency exit okay. on an airplane, we'll have that, that they would be able to come up to this, this seat, remove the panel, it would be a spring load, and remove the child quickly. So you're saying it's a one-time use product? It's, it's a one-time use product. Any car seat that's involved in an accident is null and void. Actually, most insurance companies require that that car seat is mailed to them that you go out and purchase another car seat. Well, speaking of that, never mind. Good job, gentlemen. Well, thank you. Hi, my name is Amanda Perna, and I'm the proud owner of Couture Chaos. Couture Chaos is a clothing company that incorporates green products. We recycle many things, such as plastic bottles to make jewelry. We recycle vintage fabrics to make our garments. Our target market is the young at heart. Most of our customers are in the young professional category of age, but anybody who likes unique quality garments will purchase our products. We fill a void in the industry because there are not many companies that span from day wear into evening wear, and we cover all categories of an individual's life for both men and women. We have, we transform fabrics into, for example, vintage t-shirts into tops, and we use things for our garments. Um, we <coughs> have accessories that people like who are committed to protecting the environment with the plastic bottles. Uh, this is an opportune time for the company because of the movement into eco-friendly products. So people are very interested in purchasing our things. Um, the board of our company is myself as president and director of design. We have Grant Ballard, who is the director of merchandising, and Lee Perna, who is the director of business affairs and investor relations. There's a new wave of eco-friendly fashion in need, and Couture Chaos represents the future of fashion. We value quality garments. Thank you. Judges, questions. Are you wholesale or retail? Are you, are you store or do you sell to like Belk? It's a clothing company. Right now, I'm selling primarily to small boutiques and individuals. For example, like our my custom pieces, someone would contact me and ask me to make something for an event, so I would make those pieces. Whereas the ready-to-wear items, such as the cocktail attire are in small boutiques in Florida. And why do you call yourself eco-friendly? Because we recycle things, so we use plastic bottles that are incorporated into our jewelry. We recycle fabrics that may have been just discarded and we go and buy those and incorporate <coughs> that into our design so that they're constantly being reused instead of. Now you do the recycling yourself? Yes. And so how do you know your process is economically or ecologically favorable? Because of the fact that plastic bottles are a huge issue with the environment, and we take the bottles and we reuse them into our jewelry, so that way I'm sure that things are being reused and recycled because I'm doing it personally. And other manufacturers don't recycle PET? No, that's what those bottles are made out? They do, but there's a lot of people who are just throwing them away, and I'll go and get, I collect them from people that I know that would have otherwise just discarded them. I mean, if you get big enough, you start selling to Macy's and you won't be able to go fulfill the needs. I mean, do you have it set up where? 
I'm actually in, have been in correspondence with different manufacturers who are able to do the kind of things that I'm doing. So once I have the, the um, capital to do that, then I will move on to the manufacturers instead of producing it myself. How much capital do you think you need? It depends on how the growth of the company. So to start out, you realistically need $100,000. <laughs> so I have part of that, but I still need a little bit more to get me to that. Stage. And your how much does so that dress in your hand? How much right. would that dress sell for? This dress would sell for three hundred dollars. How much would um? <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> how much? <laughs> <laughs> My wife is not shopping there. <laughs> <laughs> how much? Uh, when your competitors? The competitors in the young designer category sell for three hundred dollars and up for a comparable garment. How much again? I'm sorry. Three hundred and up. So oh, so you're right along the line. Right. And all of my things are very high quality. It's the best quality that you can have. So it's not just thrown together. So you are, it's a garment that will last you longer than a week. You can wear it time and time again and it'll hold up. And markup, I mean, how much, I mean, markup with yourself, you're working over 100% markup or how much? <coughs> right, it's, I guess it winds up being about 100% markup. For you to the retailer, the retailer has their markup. Right. Not to the very right. Stage. So that okay. would be it would sell like in a store for three hundred. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the production of your uh, product, do you have intensive uh, labor, uh, hand labor? Yes, ma'am. For example, <coughs> this dress here, which is a couture piece, is all hand sewn together um, with the couture method, and this piece here took about thirty hours to do. So that's why the pricing is where it is because it is very fine quality. So you do have a customer that would be willing to pay that. Yes, ma'am. I have a customer who I'm actually making two custom pieces for a wedding for her right now. What's the cap on how big you can get with doing this the way you want to do it? it the way that I would like to do it, um, I want some. I would like my couture pieces and like the higher end things to be in some retailers. So, I mean, it's just. Um, I guess the cap would be having it in at least one fine retailer and then the custom, doing custom work, which would require more labor, so I'd have to hire more people in order to get to that level. Would you go overseas with this or do you want to stay here in America? I would like to stay here in America because I think it's, there's so many companies that do go overseas and it tends uh, many times to be in their favor economically, but I think it's important for American designers to keep things in America because of the fact that so many people are going abroad. Have you had any experience that would help you to uh, do the things that you're doing with the tour techniques and uh, the process of making these garments? Yes, ma'am. Besides being a member of um, the Department of Clothing and Textiles here at the University of Alabama, I've had an internship with Oscar de la Renta in New York, so I learned the ins and outs of the industry. I learned what is quality, what is not quality, what customers in this price point look for, what they don't look for. And Lee Perna, who's also on my board, she's had owned five different companies. She's been um, a manager of a store, a visual merchandiser. Great. Right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Good job.